What's up, everybody? I am Evie Starr here with Mr. Aaron from Gemini Syndrome. How you doing, buddy? Doing good. Cool. We're it's a pleasure to see you. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we started a couple days ago in like Rockville. Yep. Total different environment than what's going to happen tonight. You guys know you played here before, correct? For sure. Yeah, we I think were I was here, here about, last a, time. about a year ago. Isn't that when I met you guys the first time? Yeah, I think so. I think so, too. Mushroom Head? Yeah, that was the one. We're looking at, actually, that's like 14 months ago. I know, and uh, unbelievably, you guys have only been out since 2010, and in the past year alone, you went from not having a record to being literally number one on Biggin's top 10 countdown every week. So, is it as surreal as I can imagine? Because, I, you know, it's been a, we were all at Rockville, and we all had some really, I'm sure, treasured moments with some really amazingly genuine people. Has it all sunk into you yet that this is all no. happening and it's real? Or do you still no, have to pinch yourself sometimes? It's like, it's, it's, it's both, you know? Like, we're out here and we're doing it every day, so you, you, or you, I tend to lose sight of what's happening because you're in the moment, you know what I'm saying? Right, right so right. you don't see the outside perspective of like how it's growing and, and how it's really becoming something bigger than it was before. At the same time, in that moment, I'm still meeting new fans, I'm still meeting new people, I'm seeing the growth, but it's, it's I think surreal is the, is the best way you could have described I, it, because I just, it really is. I left this whole weekend in Rockville speechless after oh, seeing all of you. I mean, um, I gotta give props to Mistress Julia, because they're, um, we were in talks about possibly working together, and I'm just, my mouth dropped open when she asked me, and you know, to me, I, that still hasn't even hit my brain, like it'll hit me and I'll start crying, but it's a happy to Mm -hmm. so, does that stuff still happen to you? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, just getting to do this for for my job, That's just all awesome. the time. You know, I mean, I get to do this all the time and That's play awesome. shows and, and you know, everywhere, every day, and meet new people. And, I love meeting new people, but is there any like? Super rock star like secrets other than you know the obvious of eating healthy and exercise of keeping your strength and energy and stamina up for all of these because it traveling's hard enough on the body and then to get on stage whether it be in the hot sun or under stage lights. Like, no. No. There's no, no there's no secret. I mean I know you're human you get tired like the rest of us but how do you I know because I've seen you many times that you go out there and you leave it out there no matter what but I've never seen a bad performance from you and I probably okay. never ever will. Oh, so, no. <laughs> how do you go when you're having a bad day, just turn it around to make it a great for a show? Or does sometimes... There, no, I think that's a, that's a good question. That's a good point, too. Um, there's something about the actual stage time. There's something about that moment. I, I kind of wonder if, like a, like, a UFC fighter has the same thing, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm like, sure. you have the, the build-up all day for your fight. Who knows, like life always happens, man. You know, things happen constantly that you, you don't have control over, whether it be good or bad or in between. Absolutely. But when it comes down to showtime, you gotta do it. Right. You have to, you don't have a choice. You know, the show must go on. It's like such a cliche old school term, I mean, but it's really true. It, it is, I, and I noticed it actually recently in Jacksonville because I, I'm, a, I'm a singer songwriter as well. And, you know, just for fun and stuff. But I go out and I sing karaoke and I sing karaoke and my voice is gone, and all of a sudden I get up there and it just makes... You can do it. Yeah, it, I can sing it. And, and it just, when I'm done, I feel like Absolutely. all my stress is just... And I'll, I'll tell you, man, I have days, you know, I do my warm-ups, I have my own little ritual before I go on stage or whatever, and there's days where, you know, I'm, I'm by myself and doing my warm-up stuff, and I can just feel the tension from playing however many shows in a row, from not sleeping well, you know, we had a couple nights um, just recently where the, the AC broke down in the, in the vehicle, oh, and no. we're sleeping in Florida heat. And this is before Rockville too. Like we were all just like, I was soaked in my sleep, you know. And I wake up to go warm up, and my body's just not there, and I start to like get panicked, you know, like, oh man, am I going to be able to, to pull this off or whatever? And then you get on stage. And whether it's the adrenaline or just the conditioning of being in that environment, I'm not sure. I'm Maybe, not it's sure I think Maybe it's both. Maybe it's both. But I get up there, and then suddenly I can do what I have to do. It's like when you get in that moment, it's all of a sudden like 
you remember all your training subconsciously and so it, it's back. it's almost like not remembering remembering well isn't that we what talk about that said? Come, we come learn true, yeah. learn everything to forget it they say zen mind beginner's mind is that like your mantra in life like if you had to like pick Partially, thing, yeah, sure i like that i don't yeah. think i've ever heard it phrased that way before. it's a it's a book actually really it's a very brilliant book zen mind beginner's mind and they talk about the idea that when you show someone a new skill set for the first time they're usually really awesome at it and then it takes you because you, you start to learn it to then you like yeah exactly <laughs> you like you start sucking really bad at this thing that you've studied for however long and then one day eventually you forget all that stuff again yeah. and it becomes that second nature kind of kind of thing and I I think that's very much part of what we do well I mean I like I said being I mean I'm, I'm definitely not trying to hurt myself but I played flute since I was this tall and I can, it's like riding a bicycle it's something that once you know, you don't have to think anymore. It's and just I'll tell you, I'll tell you this, man. For me, like, it, it just as a person, like I have, you know, I get anxious and I get nervous and stuff. Just about everyday things, not about the show necessarily, but just throughout my my day. And I'll have one of these days where I just feel like I'm gonna implode, and then we play, and suddenly that stuff doesn't exist anymore. Play the show, and then as soon as the show's done. It's like back to it, you know what I mean? Like so for that like forty five minutes you like shut off that part of your brain. It's yeah, it's really it uh, it's really incredible. It to, is nice. to see what the body and the mind are capable of doing. It, it amazes me that you can visualize something in your mind and the same muscles will fire in your body as if you're actually doing it. Mm -hmm. And so to me, like if my mantra would be something like visualize not only to actualize it and to conceptualize it, but to bring it into reality. Because, you know, I, 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 would, I was thinking... It's, it's energy that's put out. It is. And I was thinking about the questions, you know, about what I could ask about stuff like that. And to be honest, there is no question of whether you could see it in your brain or not. Because if you couldn't, you wouldn't be sitting yeah. where you are right now. So obviously the answer is yes. You saw this in your head somehow and made it happen. And okay. it's funny that you bring that up too, because long, long ago, years and years ago, we used to, a bunch of friends of mine, very heavily into like like transcendental meditation and psychology and well, now we were doing hypnosis videos. Where we'd all sit down and watch these hypnosis videos. And there was always a, a portion of it where they say, all right, now for the next few minutes, like visualize whatever it is that you need to visualize. And it was always for me, it was like forever ago, was visualizing playing shows and being on stage. Yeah. And here it is. Very similarly, when you learn martial arts, like Kung Fu or Karate or you learn a form, and they, they have you go home. They say, go go sit and meditate, and visualize in your mind doing those motions. Because somehow that energy, just the intent of doing it, yeah. will teach your body to do those motions. It will. And, and it, it's it's, it's like, like unbelievable the is. results that you can get from um, it. Have you had any like, magical experiences with it? Like, for instance, I had, I told myself that I would always be at the parking and I'd never lose jewelry. And ever since I started believing that, that's been the case. So do you have those things for you that just always work out that way because you believe them so strongly? Yeah. I yeah. mean, obviously your career is one. Cause that's yeah. Um, Most bands take 10, 15 years, which a lot of people don't realize before they get to be noticed. And you guys are fortunate enough to come out at 10 and by 2014, just cheap. Like we talked about earlier. And on that converse, though, we've all worked very hard for years before that, too. Of like, course. we all gained our professionalism or whatever. Oh, I didn't just thank you. Like, yeah, you no, 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 I know. <laughs> it's like, don't think I it mean, hasn't just been four years, you know? No, no. Because it hasn't. No, the, the most recent example I can tell you of that is uh, we played South by Southwest in March, and then I stayed an extra day because okay. I wanted to actually experience it as a patron. Instead of working, because it was as a working person, South by was it was insane, man. It was a great time, but it was crazy. So I wanted to go and actually just be like a, a fan or whatever. We're driving around trying to find parking, and it took like an hour and a half. And we had we actually got a parking spot, and then one of the people we were with was like, "No, we can find a better one." We're like, okay, so we cruise out, and then we drive for another hour. And I was getting so frustrated. 
not like angry, but just okay. I just want to get out of the car yes. already. <laughs> so we turned this one corner and I said like a little prayer to the parking gods and I was like, please, if you exist, boom, parking spot. Yes. Immediately. And I was like, that's manifest destiny, dude. That is awesome. Exactly. There is a God somewhere out there and they are looking out. There is a higher and power, it, but I really it do comes think from belief, though. I it does. really does. Whatever you, we create our own existence, and it, because of the thoughts that we all put on on a daily level, we're not solid mass no matter what we look like. So we're energy, and energy can't. Really I might fall. actually have pigment. You got a little pigment today. You know, I got a little sunburn. Is what I, got. I know. They say in Chinese kung fu, there's a statement that says, "No yi, no chi." Yi means intention, and chi is energy. So no yi, no chi, no intention. No if you're not throwing it out there, it's not going to come to you. You are 100% correct. 100% <laughs> correct. And honestly, I, you know, I, I watch The Secret, and I believe wholeheartedly in the law of attraction, 100%. And it really is like a magnet. If you are in a bad mood, you're not going to wind up talking to people who are in a good mood, and you're not going to be in a good place. And it's very important to stay in a good mental place. And which is not always the easiest thing to do. The other thing is not just how do you get on stage when you're having those bad days, but how do you just kind of deal with it and try to like, because you know, some people have a tendency to lash out, and obviously in a band you're so close, you can't really do that. You have to be direct, but honest, but caring, and considerate, and all yeah. that stuff, so. I suppose that on that level, it becomes the therapy end of it, where if I am having a shitty day like that, no, yes, of course. My bad. Um, <laughs> but if I'm having a shit day and I have to get on stage, then I, I try to use that, again, no ye, no chi, no intention, no energy. So I'll go on stage and try to use the, like what we do, those songs, and like let that demon out, let that negativity oh. out, and have that be almost, a, instead of like, oh, shit, I got to play. <laughs> yeah. Instead of that, it's like, Oh, then go. you like bring that energy into it and put it through, you know what I'm saying? Oh, and let it become that that manifestation of like let's get rid of that stuff since we have it. Might as well. I mean, you know, the whole point of this stuff of music and art is to is to love it. is to love it and to have therapy and have some sort of expression, not only for myself but for anybody who you know enjoys it and listens to it. I think anybody who um, listens to your music or is a music fan in general. It's because the music touches them in some way and they can relate to it. And it's really nice to know that there's other people out there who are going through the same things. It somehow just makes it a lot easier to do it with in life. Um, and I do have a silly question. Are any of you actually Gemini's astrologically? So the closest, I think, is me and I'm Gemini rising. Uh, yes, but yeah, that's as close as it gets. So. so the name basically, if I had to guess, would basically mean a syndrome of being on one end or the other of something Duality. and unbalanced. Duality. Hmm. If they're the That's twins, the if Gemini is the twins, and a syndrome is a collection of traits or qualities. Huh. You're bringing together those opposite ends of the spectrum. But I mean, I knew that cancer, that uh, Gemini is opposite. That's why I was curious if it was it's like Because it's the good yeah. and the bad, it's the pretty and the ugly. And well, and, and you're obviously in the industry, and you see that it's not all that it's in my mind, as people would choose to believe that it is. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Me either. Pinwheels and it's rainbows. All diamonds. Pinwheels and rainbows all day. I mean, of course, you get mm -hmm. to do what you love. So, you know, it, I'm yeah. sure it feels like you don't really work a day in your life. Most days, you know, just, I don't know if that's true well, either. But I don't mean on a physical level. I just mean you do what you love. So and I'm really very cool. blessed to be able to do that. That's yeah, really, I think that's we really are. True. Yeah. Um, I know you guys have your work about now, and it came out last year. or your September. Before? September of this year? Of last year. Oh, last year. Uh, I've had it since then. I don't know why. I told you the brain turned my head. The sun turned my brain into reverberating into the speed. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, um, it was a hot, hot, warm weekend in Jacksonville. I um, sure. was listening on the radio on the way here, and you guys are actually out with a couple of killer bands other than all the festivals. Mm -hmm. Tell everybody who you're out with. We just did some, uh, a couple weeks with Star Set. We toured with them in December. I'm sad to have another one here. Unfortunately, it's their last night with us tonight. Uh, I really love those guys. Um, now we have uh, I Set to Kill joining us tonight. Are you going out with a Vash or something like that? Uh, not that I know of. Hmm. Uh, and then we have a band called Exotype. 
coming out. I think in, in within the week, I think they join up with us. So that'll be the next tour package. So I saw I said to kill Exotype. I keep rolling and the, 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 festivals and the festivals and stuff. Yeah, so we'll roll through uh, the end of May for that. Cool. And then. Uh, and Mayhem, that's what it was. I heard you guys were going to be part of Mayhem on Sears, like literally 10 minutes ago. Some, maybe they were saying you were going to be doing dates with the band. This is bad because, because if that's the case, then I don't know about it. You find out on the radio. Uh, no, I don't think we're part of Mayhem. Yeah, I, um, but I'll hey, to check I, because I, I could be I, wrong. I promise on the way here, I heard Jim and I said, Jim, I heard going to be part of something with the Mayhem tour. So, well, I don't know. Hey man, <laughs> well, I, <laughs> whatever I you, know, again, you tell me where to be. It really has been like a really sunny and long, <coughs> not long. This weekend flew by. Did you fly by for you too? I mean, it seemed like I got there and it took over. Yeah. <coughs> and you guys stayed all weekend too, didn't you? There were two days, yeah. Cool. What did you think of um, Jacksonville Rockville Festival this year? I know you played last year. It was, it was bigger, I think, right? Because it wasn't it was only the one. It was size, but they put the stages where the main stages are on the opposite ends instead of right, right. each other. I think the whole the whole place is really cool. Just the just the ambiance and atmosphere, just like oh. the water and everything. But yeah, it's definitely a hike to walk around. But we got to see some some of our friends, you know. And who did you think? Um, and I mean, who were you looking? Were there any that you were looking forward to seeing the most? Or? I watched Rob Zombie. Um, from a really great spot. I hadn't really seen that show, I think, since I think Ozfest. Was on the same side of the stage where you were. I was on the little precipice thing that you so climbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I watched that. I hadn't seen them play since like Ozfest 90 something. Nice. So it's been a long time, and he's, man, he killed. He did. Um, went and saw the Five Finger guys, of course. They're good, good buddies of ours. And uh, the highlight of that was like Ivan throughout, you know. I oh, think he's he, such na a genuine, real he named he named us and uh, and corn I think oh, were the only two shout outs he got on stage. He was, Leo. I was you know I was standing back in front of house with those guys because I know those cats from touring with them obviously. I, I noticed that him and Brian did an interview together. Yeah, yeah. So that was really they're just they're so great. Now. They are. Man. He's one of the most genuine, real people. I mean. One thing I did notice this weekend is that The Rock ha has changed so much because everybody's doing it now. They're actually working hard to get to where they are, and the theme of the whole place was just be real. And I've been preaching that my whole life. Be real, be family, yeah. like be cool to everybody, you know? Exactly. The other The other highlight that for me personally, just being a singer and whatnot, is uh, seeing Chad from Hell Yeah. Yeah, I got to um, him. I hadn't seen him cool. since my last band when I guitar well, I played in a hotel back in the day. Really? I don't yeah. know. That was like 99, 2000? Uh, no, 07, 08. Oh. Okay. During the Essential Record. But gotcha. we, we played main support for Hell Yeah on their first, I think their first tour, their first record. And, cool. uh, you know, I grew up listening to Mudbane and stuff. And oh, yeah. Got to see Chad. And yeah, the, that one's the same color hair. Their uh, bass player, Kyle, uh, used yeah. to play in Blood Simple, so I toured with them, too. So I got to see both of those. It, it's like, it becomes like a family reunion. It really does. Yeah. Every time I go. But to see Chad, man, was just like, whoa, It's I, been like six years, yeah. man. I actually used to teach Matt Penfield's daughter, Maya, how to play the piano when she was eight. To see her at 14, and oh, it was just such That's a cool, blessing man. and an honor. Oh my gosh. It's like seeing my baby again after six sure. years. Sure. And when you teach somebody how to play music, I mean, like, they have us. Wow. Like, it was amazing. To, to reconnect with all those people too, especially after, you know, I've been doing this for, you know, some time now, and uh, I guess to arrive at, at, arrive at that level or something where we're all, you know, doing the same festivals and we're going to see each other, you know, all year yeah. all summer. And like one big party. It's very gratifying for me to, like, know that I've gotten where I am, I guess, you know what I mean? That's where I, I that. that's where I ran into everybody. Yeah, me too. So I just hanging out and we were shooting pool and stuff. Playing pinball yeah. in the back yeah. and stuff. Yeah. That was and like, uh, because of the albinism, I'm, I'm legally blind. Oh. But I love playing pool. I've been playing pool my whole life. And I'm okay at it, especially for a blind guy. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sitting there with my buddy Bagel. He's a photographer out of it. And it works for, for Cord. He's a buddy oh, of mine. Cool. And he's there, he's old school man. Dude, I'm like, you want to play? You want to lose to a 
Because he's like, yeah, man. So we start playing, and my manager is sitting on the, on the couch, man. He's watching me school bagel. Tink set up. Tink set up. And I hear, you're not fucking blind. <laughs> uh, How you like me now, dog? You just won a game of pool as a blind man. I just beat my tech, too. I just beat him, too. You beat him at ping pong. Ping pong I beat one. him at ping pong and pool before that. <laughs> right on. How so, you like me now? I, I, I love it, man. I love it. <laughs> So you guys, I, I'm not going to keep you much longer because I know it's uh, been a long week for all of us. Uh, what do you do for fun to keep yourself entertained on all those long drives? I, I beat people in pool and ping pong. You guys play video games too? No, we don't really do any of that. Um, how about, how would you I train Kung Fu. <laughs> so I'll try, I'll do, I'll practice martial arts and stuff. Oh, okay. I have a chance. Uh, I was say, you should try playing Jingle yeah. on a movie and talk about it and see how that works out. Be like, uh, like uh, Maggie from The Simpsons when she's sitting next to me, just driving the car. Yeah. That'd be me. Mike can get me a little thing. I can sit in the front seat. Pretend I'm driving, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> Actually, speaking of disabilities, I had a friend who's completely uh, paraplegic, mm -hmm. and uh, his car, the way he drove it, was with the thing on the yeah. side of the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how hard that is to do? I can only imagine. I tried. The grass is okay. It's the brakes that are on the inch. <laughs> but I mean, I thought it was neat. I get to drive without my feet for a while. Sure. <laughs> but anyway. That would be complicated. It is because you have to like push it forward to go and yeah, brake. Yeah, no, I can see how that would break. be difficult. It's definitely something to <coughs> debate. For, you know, someone who's supposedly disabled, that's a real skill. Yeah. I mean, for real, it is. So, you guys are going to be out for the rest of the summer, obviously. And I know the record is still blowing up in general. Are, are we going to hear any more radio singles of this one? Maybe. Cool. I hope so. Can you uh, give us any of those, or can I just go the, I have to pick out my own and see if I'm right? Sit on pins and needles now? Yeah. Any new... Songs that are being written and we're always writing constantly. Um, at least as much time you know as we can. Uh, there's a couple new things in the set for the headline stuff that we're doing, a couple little surprises. Alright, fine. And uh I'm not gonna see these surprises tonight or is that That'll be a surprise, I won't it. Yes, it will and I, I yeah. will enjoy it when it's you know. But, and your website is GeminiCentral.com? Correct. And they can find you on iTunes and everywhere else. Every social, social media, media is blah, 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 By slash the people, Syndrome. buy their music. Once you hear it, seriously go buy it. I mean, I can't express how much, because I, I was honestly uh, bullied a lot as a kid too. And so the song Basement really hits close to home for me as well. And just to know, what would you say to those haters that they could see now? What would you say to them? I mean, because I know you're a very mature, intelligent person, so I don't think you would be mean about it. But, I mean, in your head, you'd probably be going, mm -hmm. or at least that would in some way. I'm going to quote one of my favorite singers and lyricists of all time, Corey Taylor. Oh, I love I'll tell you what you're looking at, everyone you ever fucking laughed at. Yeah, pretty much. I had a little girl come out to one of the shows on this tour. Um, she was 10 years old. She had albums. And she showed up with her mom and her siblings wearing a t-shirt with my eye in the pyramid. <coughs> it was, it was, it was heavy, man. Like, Brian came in and told me, he's like, there's this little girl, you gotta come meet her. Sure. He's like, no, but you gotta know something that tells me the backstory. And this little girl was just incredible. Like, really oh, moved, man. moved me, man. And when I sang Basement, I normally have like a, it's not a speech, but it's like something that I say before that song to like remind everybody that everybody's different and all those things are okay and it's fine. This time I just, I, I just dedicated the song to her. I sang that song holding her hand. 
and I cried in my eyes out. The whole, the whole fucking song, I was bawling, holding this girl's hand. And You're such an awesome I've, I've stayed in touch with them, and I, you know, helping her mom out to get her involved in, in different, uh, there's a group called NOAA, the National Organization of Albinism and Hyperorientation, getting them involved in that. She's, she's a musician, she wants to be a contortionist when she grows up. Like, so cool, man, but just trying to get them involved, too. And you know, when you're saying being bullied or whatever and, and writing these, these tunes for the reasons that I did, to have that girl come out and be moved or, or something like it, it hit me hard man like really hard to play that and I still I keep her pictures in my phone and we took that and I'm like still bring tears to my eyes you're, you're making like, me tear because that's so precious and, and it's so nice of you to to be someone that she can relate to because she probably doesn't have a whole it ain't it ain't the fucking money man no it's not if that's If that's the fucking shit I can do, because of my life, and help her come up and realize she's not alone, I did my goddamn job. I did it. You it's know? gotta be probably the most fulfilling thing about doing this, isn't it? Ain't the fucking money. No, it ain't for the money. It's for the love of it. I, you gave me chills because you know what? I really. I knew I, I knew about your albinism, but to know that you actually help others in your shoes to, and and I'm the same. I, I didn't help others; she helped me. Well, yes, I, I, you're right about that. But in a sense, you did help her also to make her not feel alone and not have to go through it the way you did. I'm always so composed with this crap. It's okay. It was the first interview I've cried in. I didn't mean to make you cry, but hey, we're even because so you got <laughs> That was heavy, man. It makes it all worth it at it, the end of the day. I can imagine, um, especially on such a, a, a massive level that you guys do it on every day for so many people. And do you, like, donate from your songs to the albums and charities and such? Uh, if we ever make any money, then we Right on. <laughs> I mean, uh, I definitely, I, I've been involved with that, uh, with Noah. They're doing an interview or an article on me in there. They have a magazine called Insight, which I find ironic because we're all blind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but they're doing, I think uh, the summer edition is going to be my article that I did with this guy, Peter. Oh, yeah. It ended up being really cool. I reached out to them late last year, we were supposed to play a festival in Portland where they were having a convention and it got canceled. So I had called like before I knew that we weren't going, I was like, oh, hey, we're going to be there. Like, I'd like to come and like just mingle again because I used to be involved when I was a kid. And uh, obviously I didn't go, so I didn't think anything was going to come up. And a couple months later, I got a phone call. Would you want to do this article? I was like, Absolutely. So this was when we were with Five Finger. This was like September or October last year. The guy Peter called me up, and uh, you know, he says in the, in, in the, the article that once you read it, you, know, you can read it for yourself. He's like, I figured it was just going to call up, and it was going to be like easy breezy, you know, whatever. We were on the phone for like two hours. We were both crying by the end of it. Like he was like, I realized that you were telling my life story because he's a musician too. He's, you know, the fucking, like, tattooed albino dude who rides a Harley kind of shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> and we just bonded immediately, man. So to be able to get involved with these kind of things um, means a lot to me to have that, that platform, you know? Uh, to I, be able to express, like, the community and the I connections. I think it shows how great of an internal character you have to care about to help other people, because you could be like everybody else and say, fuck it, I'm not going to help you like myself, but to know that you have such a I, I know, but to know... Believe me, there's days I want to, you know, but that's not my character, so exactly. I, can't, I can't do that. 
can't do it. I just, I, I really admire the fact that you care so much about people. It's one thing I always admire about you and the band in general. You always treat your fans with respect and you always do what you can to make them feel special and important. And, and I, for one, am a, I will support musicians who treat me well, treat their fans well all day long, but I will not support the ones who don't. I just, I like being that we grew up a little similar when it comes to being bullied and stuff, you know, I just, I can't respect someone who doesn't look out for others because I'm such a person who wants to make sure everybody's okay. If I could save the world, I would, you know, in a heartbeat. But you're, you're, you're in your own way doing that because you're helping them out with your music and being able to relate and just being and doing your thing. So thank you. Thank you for your craft and your entire band's craft and doing what you do. And thank you for giving people like me and people like your, your friend, the little girl, a chance to have someone that we can relate to, that we know cares about us as much as we care about them for them. Can't hug. Yeah, man. <laughs> You're awesome, Aaron. You're awesome. Oh, this, this guys, the camera been on the whole fucking time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guys, this is Aaron. We're going to wrap it up now, but thank you for the deep conversation, man. You really touched me today, and I, you always do, but you know, today this has been really incredible. Always a pleasure. I will be out there ripping and roaring and screaming and shouting for your show tonight. Hopefully not drowning in the uh, hurricane like. I know. We have torrential flash floods in this city. So, guys, if you make it out tonight, you are some hardcore peeps, and we definitely appreciate it. No doubt about that. Definitely. Well, Aaron, enjoy ping pong and kicking everybody's ass in it and all that good stuff. And <laughs> I got to keep my hustler status on the DL. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, Mr. Will you enjoy the show and I will see you here in just a little while, okay? All right. All right. Peace, guys.